All right. I have gotten recommended this video so many times. I'm finally going to watch it. The caddy video of all caddy videos, apparently. Where um, the exhausting world of making a caddy video. Uh, quite a few people have recommended this one. Mostly because I keep talking about the uh, <laughs> the neighbors. So apparently, you guys, there's like deep... We're going deep diving into neighbor lore. We're getting some neighbor story time, apparently. Or at least that's what I've been told that it's at least mentioned in this video. You guys ready? You guys ready? Let's go. Oh, shaky pocket. One day, Caddy <laughs> got a text, and the text was on his phone. And it came from his other phone, so he went to find his other phone, and it wasn't upstairs phone, and perhaps it was at the front door. Ah, phone! Nice to see you! How are you doing? Come on in, I've got something to show you. This is my hallway. <laughs> you can fit okay. maybe three people in here. These are the, the black It's about how fast I walk on a good day. Stairs. I, I've got a bit of a thing for black squares. <laughs> and this is the regret glass. <laughs> regret glass? It's actually oh, no. the scientific name for it. This is where I, you know. What was that? Wait, what was that? <laughs> and this is where I film. Hi. I like you. You know that situation no. when you're posting YouTube videos for 10 years? <laughs> And then eight years into the job, you end up having to look for other work because even though you have 700,000 subscribers, your channel is practically dead. And so in a last ditch effort to save it, you change your entire video style and then accidentally revive your channel with the highest viewing figures it's ever seen in its last 10 years. We've all been there. Well, that oh yeah, we've me. all been there. And now we're at a point where I'm creeping up to 1 million subscribers, which is insane. In fact, by the time this video goes up, it might already be at 1 million subscribers. And if that's the case... Shut up. I never started this <laughs> channel with the intent of it going this far and for this long, but you know how it is? Once a new avalanche starts, you can't exactly stop it. And instead of running away from it, I decided to grab a surfboard <laughs> and be a big dude. Ever since my honestly, started, no, wait. Off. That would honestly be me. Every time I watch a video that has anything to do with, like, outdoor adventures going wrong, for some reason they keep popping up on my recommended... And I, for some reason, I click on some of them and I'm reminded, I'm reminded of why I don't go outside. Just don't do it. Don't do it. At the start of 2020, I've had at least four people ask me, how do you do it? Where do you do it? Why do you do it? At least four. It? Wow. Can you do me? Uh, wait. So I figured, <laughs> to fill in some time before my giant 1 million subscriber video, that I would spend a bit of time showing you how I do these things, while answering a load of commonly asked questions at the same time, and then presenting to you a brand new, exclusive Cadicara segment that I will be making during the making of this video, showing you how I make the video where I make. And to start off by answering one question I get all the time, and answer it immediately off the bat, do I learn all of my lines off by heart before going into making a video? No. I read them as I go, remember the lines basically right before the take, and then just give it a big old go. <laughs> it's a new day. Holy shit, what the fuck? I usually wake up in here. I wash my body, wash my mouth, come downstairs, avoid yeah, it's my about how it goes, honestly. department with eyeless what? heads. Uh-uh. 
Uh oh. -uh. Baby limbs everywhere. Ignore the rest uh -uh. of my family and head to the. <laughs> this here is the nerve center. Basically, whenever anybody I felt asks that. me, I felt that have one. I played this new game? Have I played this old game? Fuck have the I seen baby dolls, though. Have fuck them. this new Just movie? Have I had get the fuck fun? out of here, baby doll. Time, my answer will be no. No, it's not because I don't want to or anything. It's because I genuinely spend about eighty percent of my time in this room getting work shit done. The other 20% delved out between family stuff, streaming, and you know, just day-to-day -day living. This here is my house within my house. Now, depending on the type of video I'm working on, the prep work will <laughs> slightly differ. But for the sake of today's demonstration, I'm gonna show you what happens if I look at a game. For many of the topics I cover, i.e. Disney games, DreamWorks games, etc., I'll usually start by jumping on Google to see what games I can find under that umbrella. Ah, uh, the old if mistress I Google. It, I go on eBay, and a lot of the time, I end up starving my children. But if I do have it, yeah. I'll go over to the shelves and yeah. pick it out. And for today, we're gonna be having a look at Family Feud on the PlayStation. Now, the main thing <laughs> I try to get across in my videos wow. is just goofing off. I do not go into any video nowadays with the intent to review something seriously or critique it in depth. If you're looking for that, there's so many other better places that you can go. Like the times and i have to say uh, this because when looking at a video game in particular for this example first of all i take the packaging and i look at the front the back the inserts and the disc and all i do when i'm looking at this stuff is look for things that make me laugh and it can be something that's just funny on its own like this wacky bitch but other times <laughs> I look at things that aren't considerably funny on their own but then think of a gag involving it or think of something funny around it basically i am not interested in looking at any of this stuff seriously i'm just here for the jokes is that why they fired me i don't know how to tell you this but your son has passed on through the police station he's just <laughs> in the cafe hey Billy, oh my god <laughs> Either way, just full on clown. Okay. Is making notes. Note taking is probably the third longest process of a video behind filming and editing. For work specifically, I use my iPhone and a 2022 MacBook Pro, which are synced with each other 24 7, meaning that if I can think of any last minute gags or I don't have either the MacBook or phone nearby while doing something else, I can add and remove notes for videos literally any second of the day, no matter what I'm doing, which can get a little awkward during meals out. Yes, that's how I'm going to kill myself. And people often ask what? me how I. Wait a minute. Some of the stupid shit in my Wait video a minute. <laughs> has little to do with anything. And the answer to that is, if I see someone walking down the street that makes me laugh for whatever reason, I write it down. If a family member does something stupid or says something weird out of left field, I write it down. If I see a name in any context that makes me laugh, I write it down. If an event or memory pops into my head and makes me go all puffy face, red cheek, ho, 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 green giant, then I just uh, write it down. Whatever uh, around you in the world wait. makes you laugh, write it down. Except if it's other people's jokes or published writing, that's illegal. I'm talking more about original oh, yeah, ideas we already, that spring into your head based us. on things that happen around you. We, are, we already watched a little something something about that, didn't we? We already watched a little something something about that. Hmm. Hmm. In the world as it is. Even if it has no context, <laughs> it means nothing to nobody else. Wink, wink, else. nudge, it doesn't nudge. doesn't make much sense to you, even when you look it back. It doesn't matter, because you'll be surprised how... Frequently, you'll be able to take those notes and bring them forward to make it relevant to what you're talking about. It doesn't matter if I use it soon or if I use it in two years time. The point is, is that it's there and I can always refer to it if I need to. After the initial judging a book by its cover note taking, we head off to the living room to okay. play the game and record it. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. I, there, we, there we go. Okay. I was waiting for it. Use a voice critter, record your thought. Honestly, with my luck, it would probably get like either corrupted or you know the old voice recorders where uh you had an actual physical tape in them. I know. An ancient artifact. I honestly I'd probably prefer it that way. But I would somehow either corrupt it or the tape, I would just literally somehow get it destroyed. I don't know. I... Mm. 
This is my other nerve center. This is where I record game footage, film sofa shots, stream whenever I get a second. Basically, I spend most of my life in between a gaming chair and a sofa, just like a real virgin. Now, for a <laughs> PS1 and PS2 game in particular, this is how I do it. First of all, you should notice that this is an American game. And even though it is very easy to be mistaken, I am not an American. Yeehaw, partner. But that's okay. Oh, yeah, I'm blended this right custom in. Slim PS2 on eBay by searching specifically for a hacked PS2 and this one plays any PS1 or PS2 game from any region at all. American, Japanese, Arctic. It will play them all <laughs> no problem, so no need for emulation. We're getting the Family Feud experience raw. Oh yeah, by the way, this shot here, from the outside, it looks like this. Usually I would have all of this set up just one single time and then film every individual game I'm going to be talking about in the video back to back. But today, we're only going to be talking about one game, so I'm only going to be doing one shot. Also, my PS2 will refuse to read any discs unless it has this specific coffee mug sitting on top of it, about there. Yeah, it doesn't work. Unless it's had its coffee. What? It's just like a... Millennial. Now for the next question. <laughs> How do I record gameplay? Well, come with me to behind my PC and I'll show you. Oh. oh. Okay, see, this is... This is... Oh my god, I fucking hate wires! Like, mine is a mess. And I don't even have that much shit. Okay, I'm... Honestly. If... I, I don't even have all my shit out. Because I don't want to plug any more shit in. I I hate wires. I want wireless everything. I just I'm so tired of dealing with the wires. I'm so tired. Like I feel like it's honestly a miracle something hasn't caught on fire by now. It really is. Oh. Just by looking at this, we have set fire to another room in the house. The PS2 SCART cable is fed into the back of this device here, the RetroTINK 5X, which is then hooked up by a HDMI cable into an Elgato HD60S Plus capture card, which is then connected by USB-C into my living room PC. You know, that one that basically created my first ever viral video. Yeah, that lovely prick. Am I going <laughs> to fix this tangled disaster back here? No because fire hazards are exciting. Also, I'm pretty sure I've got a living colony of creatures growing back there and I'm not about to kill them. Oh, look, guys, look, there's one. There's one there. <laughs> All of these other HDMI cables are for the other consoles and the PC itself. If I ever need to put another console on my TV or extend my PC display, I just swap out the labeled cable from here and it works. I have a strategy down. Most of the time. What? This is why I don't stream, guys. And not only does it display whatever <laughs> I plug into it, as long as my PC Streaming's is on, hard. I can record whatever I see on the TV. So that's pretty boring. Something always has to go wrong at least once during a stream. Does matter. You need extremely solid, high-quality video cables, not only to make your consoles look as good as possible, but to even work with some of these upscalers in the first place. If you do a bit of Googling, I'm sure you'll find something. This one here... This one SCART cable was like 25 pounds or like 35-ish dollars. But that's nothing compared to the price of the upscaler, which is... Oh! There is a reason Jesus. for the price, though. I've been through multiple retro console upscalers. Those cheap pieces of dirt you can find on Amazon, the Tyco <laughs> OSSC, the Framemeister. But this is I recognize one of those. one I have ever used. Not to mention, it requires I don't, minimal setup. Actually, you the, just plug it in and it... The smaller one, the smaller, cheaper one, most likely. Uh, I actually have that. And I don't use it to upscale. I literally just use it because it's easier if I use that in order to plug in some of the older retro consoles in order to stream them. To, like, have them hooked up. Works perfectly. All you need to do is set your own personal preferences while it's already yeah, working. Yeah, because I need more wires. Yeah, exactly. Looking sharper than a hammer. <laughs> with a nail on it. And for those curious, with most consoles, you can just plug them into the capture card and start recording. But some aren't quite so nice. The PS4 and PS5, for instance, need you to turn the HDCP copyright protection off, which then allows you to record Oh my games, god, this is so annoying. ...being able to stream on Netflix or watch movies, etc. And the PS3... The PS3 just hates you. It has yeah, copyright protection it was built so in frustrating no turn it off. when I so first started I trying to record and stream the PS3 HDMI on PlayStation 3. This specific splitter. And then that it tricks will the fight card you. The split duplicated signal isn't coming from the PS3 and instead from the duplicated split display itself from the splitter, which isn't copyright protected.
It's confusing. Don't ever make YouTube videos about video games. Oh, and these cables <laughs> here, these are for my GameCube. These are the official Nintendo component cables in order to make the GameCube look as crisp and as nice as possible for the upscaler. And you can get one of these yourself for only... It's expensive. Don't ever make what? YouTube videos about video Right, so what now the we're at the part where less than 5% of the process is spent while having a career in video Just games. for the wires? Playing a video game. Yeah, you may be You literally need to be, like, at minimum a millionaire to afford all the retro what? old shit these the days. The work, making a video, this is the thing I easily spend the least amount of time doing. Either way, at this point, I sit myself down, grab my phone out or my MacBook from the office, depending on if it's doing something else in the background at the time, play the game, and make more notes. With love from Spots. <laughs> so stupid. I Hello, yes. I'm Spots. Today I'm here to be a corporate shill for Casetify, the oh. excellent custom phone case company for whatever iPhone or Android. Well, at least it's truthful using. about it. Slim, protective, and stylish. <gasps> But, but that's me. If you're looking for some <laughs> new snaz on your phone, then there's no better option than Casetify. What with their endless design options, well, not Casetify. I've never heard of Casetify. Breeds. Oh my God. Fucking like hell. They support MagSafe <laughs> and wireless charging. They feature an antimicrobial coating to eliminate 99% of bacteria. They're all made with 65% recycled and plant-based materials. They're shipped to you in 100% recyclable packaging. And when they deliver it to you, they'll even bring their own wood chipper so you can recycle yourself. But what about people like me who like to deliberately drop their phones? Well, Casetify have you covered with the double-layered Qi Tech material. Their impact cases are safe to be dropped at 6.6 .6 feet height. Wow, I can't wait to drop it more. And if you opt in for an ultra impact case, you get four extra corners to help your phone survive drops of up to 9.8 feet. Wow, still, it still works. I was so worried I'd never be able to hang my phone off the end of a bench while I'm standing on it ever again. So if you want some of this action yourself, make sure to go to caseify.com forward slash today to get 15% off of your order. Thanks again to Caseify for sponsoring today's video. And if you don't go and buy anything from their website, I'll come out of your phone case and kill you. So yeah, those are the sponsored segments. Forgot to talk about them, didn't I? But yeah, honestly, that's just another part of the process. Uh, usually... A sponsor will reach out to me and my agents months before any kind of video goes live. And then depending on what I'm doing throughout the year, I will try my hardest, depending on what sponsor it is, to work that sponsor into the script or the topic of the video. If it syncs well enough, then we'll try and make it work. Also, yes, I get a lot of offers. And also, yes... I do turn some of them down. In fact, a lot more get cancelled and turned down than actually go through. Also, fun fact, it's actually written in my agency's contracts that Spons, the sentient talking kite with a face, fingers, and shoes, has to appear to do the ad read. <laughs> yes, it's a legal stipulation. I'm not joking when I say that. Oh my that god. That is more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Anyway, where were wow. we? Yes, at this point, wow. I set myself down, grab my phone out, legally binding office, on if it's doing something kite. else in the background at the time play the game and make more notes did i tell you i make notes i make notes if you do this you'll make notes you'll be making a lot of notes you will be such an expert at taking notes that you'll end up being the head of a note camp you will be so full of notes you'll be jesus a christ what will you be noting down though well for me basically anything stupid that happens and that's worth talking about in the video also very important with timestamps on when each stupid thing happens see I, whenever i've had to take uh notes over the years also i love where i pause it at um no matter what i was taking notes for i always have this problem where i'll take notes and then i'll never go back and read them like it's a problem i have and i don't know how to i don't know what the cure is because i can't i can't help it sometimes i'll take notes i'll take important notes or just random ideas in my head, whatever, and then I'll forget about them and never read them. I, I, it's a problem.
relation to the footage that you've recorded. If you don't do that in the noting process, you are going to waste hours in the editing booth. Trust me. I mostly look out for things that make me laugh, but I also try and write down dumb or creative ways that I can try explaining why I like something or don't. Which sounds like I'm going into a review mindset, but trust me, I'm really not. Because if I was, I'm an insult to good reviewers out there. I feel like <laughs> I only ever explain the mechanics or visuals of a video game, just for instance, only to emphasize a joke or the conclusion to the segment on whether I liked it or didn't, and then I just like to trash it and forget it and move on to the next thing. For me, I feel like it's very base level. That's why you'll notice that most of the individual game segments on my massive videos don't tend to last more than like two to three minutes tops. Not just because the video will end up being 10 hours long if I went into depth, but also because <laughs> I just point and laugh at the thing, give you a ride through my personal experience with the game, usually with chronological moments, say if I liked it or not, and then move on quickly. If you can see what I see and hear what I hear with something that's so clearly, obviously terrible, there's only so much depth I can go into anyway. So in in my opinion, with my videos, there's no point. Also, also, I did try and do the whole look at me and my big important opinions. I'm old retro gamer. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Youngsters, ho ho. I got. Listen here, whippersnappers. Boy, boy. I tried <laughs> all of that stuff years ago and also tried to splice in jokes there. And whatever your opinions on those older videos are for me, I don't think they've aged well in the slightest. I think there's a huge clash in video styles when trying to do the whole I've got an opinion I want to tell you and explain in depth why that is and also I want to do Monty Python shit. I think that's way too much of a clash. And to put it bluntly, a few years of doing that kind of routine, structured kind of video and having to approach them exactly the same way and having them come out in more or less the same way <clears throat> and doing it week after week after week it made me miserable i tried my hardest i put everything that i could into it the passion was there but you can only do so much in a week and uh, all i want to do is make sure that i'm entertaining enough to whoever's watching so that you don't Quit the video and then don't run on the internet to try and dox me. Right, so we played the game, made the notes, saved the footage, moved it to a USB drive, stood outside for a second to question if any of this was a good idea, fell over, copied the footage to the Mac, and now it's time to start the script. Believe it or not, whenever I go to conventions, I think I get asked more questions about my scripting process than anything else. Which is weird for me, because when I spend my time dressing up in a cone-shaped bowl and an extended arm shirt and prop hands while calling myself Long Dennis, I think my audience has their priorities backwards. How do I structure them? How do I come up with the ideas? How do I stitch it together? How do I plan out everything? The honest but annoying answer is that I just sit here and write. That's honestly all I do. Obviously, I have my notes for Whoa. reference, but when it comes to the cutaways, extra jokes, sofa shots, intro segments, transitions between each thing that I... The secret sauce. ...talk about, all of that is up in here. And then I put it... What? <laughs> Sadly, I'm not even Whoa. joking when I say that either. Amazing. I wish I could give you all advice <laughs> or hints and tips about scripting or what I do with writer's block, but seriously, I just sit here and do i can't explain it i already have a rough idea on what i want to write and how i want to present it in a video before i do anything with the script ever since i started writing anything even at school that's just how i write even until today i proofread as i go i fix mistakes as i go i change things remove things and swap things out as i go i suppose the only advice i could give anybody is to not get too worked up except that you will not be a master of this on your first few attempts and just let it all out on the page if it sounds right to you when you write it then it's probably right unless you write this then maybe change it and if your friends <laughs> family or comments end up telling you that it isn't right or not funny or not informative or whatever you're going for then that means you just need more practice it's like anything you get better at guitar the more you play you get better at driving the more you drive you get better at riding a bike the more you ride a bike you know, explaining how fast you should bend your knees and stiffen your ankles doesn't stream really do much. Game more tomorrow? Yep, internet god's willing. I'm going to. Hopefully I'll actually start the stream in time. Because <laughs> that's always the 50-50 chance with me. Just go with the flow. Don't be afraid to experiment and make mistakes. And then eventually, you'll look back and think, 
God, I was shit. But then give it another few years and you'll look back to yourself at that point and think, God, I was shit. Having a creative job is basically a never-ending loop of getting incrementally better while also shitting on yourself. So I really hope you're into that. Now, what do my scripts look like? They look like heroin abuse. How in the ever-loving Christ do I get anything done with a script structure like this? It's just a wall of text. Well, there's actually a reason for it, because while using Google Docs in Calibri font at size 22 in one continuous sentence with no paragraphs, for me, that roughly translates for my videos as one page per one minute of video, which does wonders in planning out how much time I have for filming, making plans away from work throughout the week, and just giving me a rough idea of where the video is actually going in the first place. Not to mention, when it comes to filming and recording voiceover, the way I write scripts actually massively helps me, because you see, oh my God, my I fucking eyes. code every line on the script based on what needs to be done with that line or body <laughs> action. For instance, no highlight means that I read the line as VO on my microphone like I'm doing right now, Yellow highlight means read that line on camera on the sofa. Purple highlight means read that line and do the action on camera away from the sofa, outdoors, indoors, or away from the house. Orange highlight means read the line as VO on my microphone, but film the relevant footage that goes on top of it. Red highlight means read that line in front of the green screen. And green highlight means insert a downloaded clip or gameplay footage in replacement of anything else to fill the gap. Why aren't the green highlights for reading the line at a green screen? Because I... Boop, boop. After this, I take another <laughs> quick read through of the script from start to finish to fix or change anything, and then pay attention to all the color-coded highlighted camera shots, because it's now Spiral. when I start writing down all of the props and Was at least 500,000 pages. For some shots, equipment I need to hire for some shots, etc. And then I go online to sort it all out. I have to make a few special orders here or there on specialist websites and a couple of phone calls here and there, but Amazon is my usual go-to for most of my costumes and props because of how quickly it can be delivered. And this this is a typical bill that will be racked up from all of it. I am going, I am going, I am going to lose my house. At this point, <laughs> while waiting for all of the video items to arrive and waiting for the important filming dates in certain places, I then go into recording the microphone voiceover, which you are listening to right now, as I already said. And I have gone through many microphones in the past, but right now I use a Rode NTG3B plugged into my mixer and Maddie Face Pro. But honestly, you can get great results even with more budgeted choices. For instance, I have used the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB mic from 2012 up until around 2018. And I even dabbled with the Shure MV7 USB mic for a few years. It depends heavily on how you record your audio and how you finalize and export it. For the recording process, I'm in the most sound isolated part. Yeah, of I know some people, it's echo, like... Which luckily enough is... <laughs> Oh god, I don't mean to pause them on these, <laughs> but I, I've seen people where they literally have mics that cost like thousands of dollars and they use it for like streaming and, and making videos and stuff, but it's literally meant for, for like, um, basically musicians and stuff, singers, like professional artists like that you know what i'm saying and it's like you don't you don't need that you don't need that just find a mic that doesn't sound like uh every time you talk into it you're talking into a tin can and you're fine don't be spending enough money on these mics to where you could have bought a car you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying don't do it my office. I've got some really thick and dense high quality acoustic panels for the wall here to stop the, the sound bouncing off the walls. I've got a pop filter here to stop my P's and my B's blowing out the <laughs> input of the mic. And I've got a shock absorber here to reduce vibrations coming from the floor or the shelf or wherever the microphone is attached. And I usually personally use a radical telephone between my mouth <laughs> radical and blah, the mic. Radical. The mic volume input or mic sensitivity, I keep it as low as I can to stop my shouting voice from peaking and distorting the audio, but keep it high enough to capture my quiet 
prior to talking. It takes a little bit of fiddling, but what I find yeah, is that the audio is annoying. Being pretty it's annoying. And background noise. This does mean after I finish recording that I will barely see my quieter voice segments on the wavelength while my shouting looks like a snake swallowed a bowling ball, but that doesn't matter because at the end of the session, we'll be boosting, equalizing, normalizing, and compressing it to try and make it all as much the same bass volume as possible. And now you're ready to be a milkman. I record all of the video's lines in one or two sittings, depending on the time of day that I start. And to give you a rough idea on how long that might take, a one hour long Catechorus video may take me probably three hours-ish to record in one go, while my feature length accessories video took about five and a half hours. Why, yes, I did want to die. Well, Every mistake is kept in and there's no stopping or starting with the recording. So a little bit so of time. One big audio file ready to be cut down for the edit later. For now, I just read it all out and worry about the logistics later. And this is another reason why my scripting style helps me personally, because when reading the lines directly from the script, I know from just a glance at the screen what needs to be recorded on the microphone and what's being filmed. So I can skim through it to the next important bit of VO in seconds, guarantees I don't miss anything important, and records it all chronologically for the video edit. Okay, it's been a few hours and now I have a bit of a headache. So we should start exporting <laughs> the audio down. Now, when I used to edit on PC, I used this great software called Magic's Music Maker and fiddled with all the preset drag and drop effect racks until I got the voiceover sound that I wanted. But nowadays I use Logic Pro for compression, EQ adjustment, noise removal, and normalizing. What settings do I use? There's no point telling you. <laughs> Because it depends heavily on your mic input sensitivity, the quality of your mic to begin with, yeah, again, how deep or high your voice is. To this is this is why I'm so I'm so frustrated when it comes to trying to get audio right for doing anything basically with a mic, and it, it's it's so annoying because it's literally different for not only your voice specifically, but also where you're at, what you're doing at the time. Like it, it is frustrating. To begin with, how clear your voice was, background noise. So what I suggest is take all the settings and equipment you have and then look up tutorials on YouTube. Or as I like to call it, Skillshare for free. So now my voiceover <laughs> has exported and it's here where my work schedule branches off slightly. Depending on the timings of what's going on, I'll either just wait for Ollie to appear so we can start the filming process if he's coming soon, or while I'm waiting, I can start cutting down the audio right now. And currently, Ollie's not going to be with me for a few days. But I'm right here. So instead, I'll cut <laughs> down some of the voiceover until he gets here. I'll go into more detail about what editing software I use and all that jazz later. But for now, this is what I do. I plop the entire hours long audio track into the edit timeline, start playing it back, cut out all the takes that are mistakes or are just plain shit, stitch the good takes together with the right comedic timing, and then... Oh, you weren't supposed to record me smacking my own bum. No, don't worry. These <laughs> movements are explainable and surprisingly useful. Just like my ass. You see, I tend to do this what? a lot while recording I VO. And the reason for that is because those claps pop up really loud and clear on the audio wavelength during the edit. And let me know to split the audio file there and leave a gap because another bit of sound, gameplay or video goes right there before the start of the next part of VO cuts in. Oh, which yeah, is that's extremely like... handy for when I have to edit yeah, down audio that's first that's simple, and then fill but in the smart. stuff that isn't done later on. But even then, there's only so much of this I can do before I do need some camera shots. Where the hell is Ollie anyway? <gasps> Who could that? I'm Ollie. <laughs> I'm Ollie. Oh. I'm here. Let's do this. Yes. But before all of that, <laughs> we need to go and get <laughs> the bricks. In the fucking mirror. Oh, no. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> Chair. For the sprites. This here is the, the crash map. This thing here. For uh, when you, you know, it's for falling on the floor. That's mud. Okay, so before we go into that room there, um, I just have a quick um, side note to mention about this trampoline here. So in my Jesus Games video, there's one shot where I take a step off of one of the roofs. Two of Ollies? My house, yeah, you just clone one there. as you go. 
Oh, oh, okay. So I take a step off of that roof and I needed something to catch me from falling and breaking my entire body. So the only thing I could order and have delivered here in time before Ollie got to me was this 14 foot trampoline. So I didn't buy it for the kids, didn't buy it for anybody. I needed it for one shot of that video. And now we've got a 14 foot trampoline. Well, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Welcome to that's the that's one everyone. reason to get a trampoline, I guess. It's more commonly known. Because you Jesus. The dump. So I would say this is where <laughs> all of my props and costumes are kept, but they're they're everywhere. Like it's not even just that, but like even like fake blood and all that. Like all of that stuff is kept here. I would say it was kept here, but that's not the accurate way to describe it. I'd say they weren't kept and more shoveled and if i ever come in here <laughs> looking for a certain prop and then i'm like oh I, I swear i had one of these where did it go and i can't find it anymore um that's because yeah i waste a lot of money this here is a homemade <laughs> like emergency green screen room if there's an you might you might destroy screen, one or two items occasionally this is where it's done um the soundproofing isn't great and also um wah! yeah that doesn't help either but you know sometimes you need a big steel barrel for a video you never know these lights up here are being um diffused by a, a chef's hat around here is my <laughs> beloved roland td50 drum kit um all electric um i used to do drumming so videos so far lot, i'm loving then... i'm loving this this like simultaneous effect of of professionalism and janky <laughs> youtube decided nope you're not doing them anymore because it's gonna make you go bankrupt so until youtube changes its mind or i have enough spare time to just make a random cover of any song or whatever that I can do, I will definitely do it. But as you can see, I'm not really equipped to record anything in here right now. This is just my practice space. Also, I know that this here looks a bit weird. Um, there used to be more posters here, but then I grew up. That's it. You have an overactive oh. imagination. It is time to grow up. This what? goes this, this, this. Look, this oh my God. You clean this up. <laughs> Oh my god, first of all, that scene fucked me up when I watched that as a kid. I was so angry. Oh my god, I was so, so upset. Uh oh! <laughs> Oh, hello. Oh god. Oh god. I'm a sailboat. The wind. No. This is ri it's so much more awkward than it looks. Um it's it's not the heaviest thing in the world. It's just very wait. No. Uh, back back hurty hurty back. Oh, that's a thing. No. Everything just everything hurts. Everything. Okay, go back door. Oh, Physical oh, effort. Go. Everything yeah, hurts. Well done. Yes. Snap crabical pop. Good. It's upside down, isn't it? God damn it all! I now gotta go up and around, and then back in, and then again, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. Let's go fly a wall. And now we're going to be putting the brick wall behind the sofa. Now this is what we do here. First of all, this is the most important step. We use. Sports to rag mugs, all right, right, all right, lads. And we, we don't use two know of what these. that is. Two of these exactly Sports. Like They're just the right width and dimension. Sport. We pull the sofa back, <laughs> shove them down there, right, right, right. pull that back, and that just gives us enough elevation for the brick wall to be high up enough to be on camera. So then we grab the wall and then we move the wall. Uh, how do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And then we balance it on the Sports Direct mugs. It it didn't balance on the mug. There we go. Ah, just like just like the footy. There we go. There we go. 
<laughs> Sports Direct, <isn't> it? <laughs> <laughs> Go get more shorts. Oh, by the way, totally forgot to mention, the camera setup itself. I use a Sony Alpha 7S 3 DSLR camera with a Sony FE 24-70mm to lens. The microphone attached is a Rode NTG video mic, which is basically the camera-ready version of my VO mic, and a Westcott Ice Light 2 on a weighted mic stand for emergency cool and warm lighting, or to guide ships away from the rocks and back to port. <laughs> and, side note, this is the amount of camera gear and specialist equipment Ollie ends up taking with him in his car, ready for whatever shots need doing at my place. Jesus. Stabilizers, drones, jibs, you name it, he has it. Oh dear. It's an improvised shot. So you're probably wondering, based on this shot I'm doing now, how much of the script is improvised? As in, like, when we go into filming or when I do VO, how much of it is improvised? And I would say, if I had to wager a guess, about 10% is improvised, the way the rest of it is solidly written down. But the improvisation can be from, like, um, like different body actions or faces or um, noises I make or the way I say a certain line or maybe... A on that moment when we hit go on the record button i think of something on the spot that's funnier than what i wrote down to me anyway or something will happen during a filming session that will make ollie laugh more than what the actual line was so we'll keep that in instead so yeah i'd say roughly 10 percent. 10 percent is roughly improv so now we've prepped the sofa ready for all of those <laughs> iconic shots but we can't film them yet because it's still daylight outside and we need total darkness for the sofa shots to look as good as possible meaning at this point we use the remaining daylight and dry weather to get outdoor shots filmed in random locations so come on mates let's go ahead to the filming <laughs> oh boy away we go <laughs> Now, when we film out and about, it doesn't I was taking a drink of water, damn it. being off campus miles away from my house, but whenever the sun is out and the weather is decent, we will just try and get any kind of filming done <sighs> wherever, whenever we can. They can be just outside the front or back of the house, <laughs> or even on the street. Yes, people see me all the time. Yes, I end up having to explain to the public what I'm doing. Yes, it's mortifying, and no, I can't run away and hide because I'm usually wearing high-heeled thigh boots or an inflatable post box. <laughs> There's a ton of stories I have about being seen doing something messed up while filming in public, and I would be here way too long if I went into all of them. The Jesus video alone got some people's eyes eyebrows raised so high that they flew off. But just for one of the more recent examples, uh, for the intro on my Crash Bandicoot bootlegs video. So, I so far, some neighbors don't have eyebrows anymore. Good to know. Good to know. ...from the back with my Crash Bandicoot costume on, and um, because I couldn't see anybody coming down the road here because I'm behind the fence and I have an obscure -y mask on, and Ollie wasn't looking because he's obviously facing that way, filming me, what we didn't realize until we did one of the takes, which sadly wasn't saved because Ollie panicked and hit stop the second we realized what was going on. But one of the takes, I leapt over the fence, tried to do my struggling and say my line. And at that point, I looked over to the front door, which is just there, and realized that there was a young woman standing there with her baby delivering us something through the letterbox. I think it was a, a Slimming World leaflet or something. Wait. The face they made. I've never seen a Wait. human make that face before. Wait. If I had to compare it to Why was she delivering something with her baby? Wait. Wait a minute. Why? Was it bring your your toddler to work day or thing I'm an angry lizard and I like once we explained what was going on and that I was just in the costume and I wasn't, I didn't know they were coming and I wasn't trying to jump scare them and kill them or anything. <laughs> um, they all calmed down. Not sure about the baby. Baby might be traumatized. Oh shit! I was talking to you for so long, it's night time! So off we set <laughs> to the sofa, featuring bricks, hand-painted by my eldest stepdaughter. Very well, I will add. And also, speaking of that, whenever you watch a video of mine and there's a hand that comes into the side of the frame, because Ollie's obviously holding the camera or I get hit by something or something gets thrown at me chances are it's either my girlfriend Karis or one of her kids they will never say no to a chance of trying to throw something at me this <laughs> is what you guys see but for me this is what I see there's Ollie oh my god my eyes ooh hairbrush the iPhone camera doesn't really do this justice but trust me these lights are incredibly bright and even though the exposure on the iPhone is really good and you can see Ollie back there, from where I'm sitting right now, I can't see him. He's hiding back there. 
I can see him clearly through my phone, but when I take my phone away, th no, I can't, I can't see him. He's hiding <laughs> back there with the same lens, the same camera, same everything. Why don't I use a tripod? Because um, he needs to make his money's worth. And also, I don't <laughs> like the tripod look, um, for videos, I like a slight bit of handheld wiggle, I suppose. Um, but also, the same microphone, like I mentioned, is there, but it's it's hanging from here. I've heard about that, it's Phoenix, where they'll, this, they'll make, like, food deliveries stand. and shit, and they'll have, like, their whole ass rather, family in the car. Which is, um, like, a shit tree with no leaves on it and possibly these lights here are the most important parts of the process especially for the sofa shots um, i mean i get it if you can't find like a babysitter or something like 31 lights and they are definitely the most expensive but it also seems kind of process as well unsafe Each one of these lights isn't only at the same so time? ridiculously <laughs> powerful that when i'm sitting on the sofa it feels like i'm staring into two separate suns but they also come with thousands of color gradings and yeah that would hurt i would be i would have to wear sunglasses if i did that Usually, shit oh <laughs> filming these shots when the two youngest kids end up going to bed um, because I'm not massively comfortable screaming some of the stuff I scream when they are looking at me while I scream it. That's typically around <laughs> 11pm unless we can start earlier because the kids are at a sleepover or something. And we usually find ourselves filming these shots until about 1am, but sometimes even like 3 or 4am because I keep forgetting my lines or the video is really, really damn long. And those are Ollie's favourite nights. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry though, he does get paid and he is fully aware of what he's getting into every single time he comes over here. He actually gets really well looked after when he comes over. He stays here for about three to five days and he even has his own special place to sleep. Now if what? I hear you make any noises in the middle of the night, I swear to God you'll get oh the my. drill. Oh my God, you can also see that escalated right this is the so other reason quickly. This book is so useful because, <gasps> oh, look at that. The script is right there whenever I need to remember what to say or what props I yeah, need. Yeah, you said it was like a magazine or something. Stupid wall of text the random lady with her baby. It's super easy for me to skim through and see when the next sofa shots are. So I go down. There it is. See? Told you I wasn't nuts. Anyway, we've now <laughs> finished the sofa shots. So all that's left for us to do now is tidy up. And when I say tidy up, I don't mean tidying up the camera equipment and stuff. I mean the various liquids that get spilled all over the place and broken shards of plastic left behind after a midnight romp. Yeah. Excuse me! And once we've cleared up... Time for bed! Good night, Ollie. Good night, everyone. <laughs> ah, good morning, everyone. Now is the time where we repeat the filming days for as many times as it's needed before Ollie goes home. And then on the final day, as he makes his way home, he still can't escape me. Because then I follow him back to the halfway <laughs> point between his house and mine as we make our final stop in the filming process. Welcome to MacMook, a multimedia filming space in Gloucestershire, which is where we do any of the green screen shots before the final edit. And it's run here by Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Piss off. And I know what you're going to say, <laughs> but Caddy, what about the back garden green screen setup with the sounds welcoming and friendly? On the ceiling? Well, that did work for me for a while, but this. <laughs> Not even in the same ballpark. I don't think I'll ever be able to compete with something like this while I live in my house anyway. So what I'm going to do with that space in the back garden is keep it for prop storage and stuff. But I'm also going to get it completely soundproofed and completely sound isolated so we can record instruments and other voiceovers. And I do have another idea for another channel that I want to make use of in that particular room in my garden. But... It's not really developing yet, so don't listen to me about that right now. But there are plans, let's just put it that way. And with that, we're done with the green screen. Bye, Andrew. <laughs> After a 90-minute drive home, it's now time I feel to go you, back Andrew, I feel to my you. desk here, where I do the remainder of the work and run my human trafficking operation. You might be wondering what? how on earth I'm able to seamlessly move my MacBook from room to room and not have it totally Wait a minute. shit Hold itself up. with all the monitors one second and then none the Running next. And that's what? because I have one single cable here plugged into a Thunderbolt dock hidden under my desk that connects both of my monitors, my speakers, and any other USB device I need, like my microphone, mixer, mouse, and keyboard. All I have to do is unplug this cable to continue working without those things, and then plug it right back in to carry on with those things like nothing happened. Seriously, this might be my favorite thing about the new MacBooks, and I usually hate books. Now, this is where we go into the full-on heavy editing process. Now, when I was on PC, uh, my go he's trafficking software Ollie. for over He's also cloning him, so I was cloning school, and trafficking was Ollie Pro, continuously. And I still recommend it for its beginner friendliness. As long as you get the most recent version anyway, and as long as you have a powerful enough PC to run it properly. Nowadays, though, <laughs> I use this thing. Hmm, yeah, I wonder what I that it's a torrenting-looking symbol meant. And it barely weighs anything, but don't let it fool you. 
this thing is a hulking beast. We film everything on this channel at 4K resolution, 60 frames per second. And with the M1 Max chip in this MacBook, not only does Final Cut Pro, which is the editing software I use, run all of the footage back through the preview window at its original resolution and original frame rate with zero lagging and zero pausing at all. <laughs> But also, <laughs> it doesn't crash. Like I get maybe one crash. Yeah, per I've week, heard. I've heard like uh, out there. for for editing shit. Like if you're if you're making any kind of content or if you're having any type of job where you're editing videos and sound and shit, I've heard most people will literally just get a, a some type of uh, Mac computer or laptop or whatever just for editing, and then use like a, a regular. Windows PC for everything else. You would know that that is a miracle, and also 4K on Vegas, your computer just goes on fire, even if you've got the most powerful thing in the world. And and look, there's no fan noise or anything. It's quiet. It's sleek. It's I love it. Um, but yeah, the whole no crashing, no pausing, no lagging, or anything in the preview window, that alone makes Final Cut Pro worth it for me. Now, I am not about to sit here and explain to you what I do in Final Cut Pro for my videos and how I do all the things that I do, because there are people online that dedicate entire channels to the inside outs of all of the kinds of editing software that you're looking at. I can't just sit here and explain to you all in one video or even multiple videos 10 plus years of Vegas editing experience and nearly one full year of Final Cut Pro editing experience, including the process I had to go through of stopping everything I knew about Vegas and relearning how to video edit for <laughs> brand new software uh, and applying everything that I knew with Vegas into Final Cut. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I pee my pants. But all I will say <laughs> is that every single thing you see in my videos what are all fuck? done through this software. <laughs> Aside from occasional jingle compositions that I do on GarageBand. And of course, I can't forget to mention all of my other friends and business colleagues that have done things for me in the past. Like my search engine optimization and tags <laughs> and title guy. Oh my and god. And my thumbnail artist. And um, the, the, my animators for my intros that I've used. And the, the, the music that I've done. And the guy that animated my PC story video. The on screen text, Jesus images, Christ. special effects, why did that? Why did it make it sound masking, so ominous? Tracking, distortion, audio effects, all of that is made possible with this single software. Oh, uh, yeah, and Photoshop. Kind of forgot to mention that one. I use, I use, a, I use a lot of Photoshop. For pictures. And to be fair, <laughs> when I was on Vegas Pro years ago, I only ever use that on its own too. I've never gone into Premiere or After Effects, nothing like that. I'm a one software man. I'm very loyal to my women. Oh my and then comes god. The ultimate question. How long does this all take? Well, for me nowadays, along with my personal life and how much more production <laughs> goes into the videos compared to where they used to be, it takes as long as it takes. I know that's a really bad answer, but it's really the truth. If I can get one thing done a month, great. If I can get one thing done every two months, great. Every four months, fantastic. To me, it doesn't matter. I just want to make the videos the best they can possibly be for you to all want to rewatch and enjoy for their quality over their quantity. Some days I'll edit for 14 hours. Some days I won't finish my edits until six in the morning. Some days I'll just keep on working for like 36 hours in a row plus for the final crunch time and sometimes i'll actually get a reasonable bedtime like a good boy but there's no real clock <laughs> on this kind of work you just do what needs to be done when it needs to be done and however fast you can do it especially if you have a sponsor deadline although if you want a rough idea how long these things can take to edit as a whole here is a picture i took of the editing timeline for my 95 oh my minute God. PS1 accessories video this literally took me about three weeks solid to edit on its own. And initially, I thought it was only going to take one week. So never oh. underestimate your work. Wow. Well. It can really sting your little peepee. -pee. But why don't you get another editor? Why don't you hire yeah, shout out to the insanity. entirely and stop that editing is altogether? Why don't you edit yourself to die and then die in real life? Well, you'd be surprised how many people reach out to me on my business email. I'm loving what he's putting on the screen over there. Services because of how tired i get and how i love complaining about it but i'm sorry that's never gonna happen
ever. But don't get me wrong, I really massively appreciate it. Thank you so much for looking out for me. You're all sweethearts. At least for the main channel. I already have another editor, and that is Sir Toasty, but he only edits all of my stuff on my second channel when I do best of compilations of my Twitch streams. So I clip the Twitch streams myself, and then I send him all the clips throughout the year, which can be like 300 or so clips. It could be a lot. And he just gets me. He's on the same wavelength as I am. I don't need to direct him. I don't need to explain anything to him. He just gets what I'm looking for, my sense of humor. I just give him all the clips and he stitches them all together into Puppy. a cohesive story. With <laughs> stupid Puppy. Puppy. On top. He's really good Puppy. at that. I trust him for that. But when it comes to my own stuff, I just want to keep it to my own stuff. I am more than happy being a one man show that writes acts and edits all on my own. Ultimately, only I know in my head how I want everything to be written, how I want the comedy to look, how I want the editing to be timed, how I want it to be edited in general. It's all preconceived in my head before I even start making it happen. And I just don't think I'd be able to communicate or direct that to anybody else without feeling like there was something missing I wouldn't be 100% happy with it, and that's not good enough for me personally. If I got another video editor, I'd be spending more time trying to just explain to them what I want and directing them and having things sent to me and then sending them back with improvements or whatever the hell more than just editing it myself. Especially now since I've got all my keyboard shortcuts and mouse shortcuts set up for this software and I can just jump in naturally and start editing without really thinking about it. And, oh my god, the Twitch streams. I forgot to mention the Twitch streams. I'll, they're another rick of a roll if I ever ricked a roll. Whenever I get a second <laughs> spare and the technology gods are in my favour, this is what I do with my streaming. Here is my basic setup. So come with me, everybody, to my motion-activated light-up cupboard. Uh, uh. <laughs> what I've got here is a Rodecaster Pro mixing desk for the microphones with effects and compression settings built in, multiple Shure SM7B microphones for whoever in the house wants to join in, and a Logitech Brio 4K quality webcam. Then, when I grab it all to take it into the living room, once again I use the Elgato HD 60S Plus for live capture on consoles and my PC. Trust me, it's a lot easier doing it this way than it is using direct desktop capture. I also have to unravel my... 4K LG monitor here, and then I and then I put it on the coffee table. Then I also have to unravel my Elgato Stream Deck, which is um, what I use for all my live stream effects, scene transitions, volume control, all that kind of stuff. Then I move that onto the coffee table. Then I come back over here and unravel this wire here, which I am not going to do right now because I don't think you guys have done anything to deserve watching me go through with all of that. And it <laughs> used to be two headphones, but now it's just one single headphone. I cut the other one off to teach it a lesson. All of my stream alerts uh, for donations, uh, Twitch uh, bits, subscriptions, gifted subs, all that kind of stuff, that gets fed through here, right into my ear, so that you guys don't hear an echo through the mic if it was coming from the TV speakers, and also means I can control the volume of this separately and mute it without interrupting the gameplay and stuff like that. And then I also unravel this cable here, which then immediately gets fed into the webcam, which I then plant on top of the monitor. But I know what you're thinking. How does this look when it's all set up? Womp womp, here it is. Well, Bye -bye. Cable station. The next stop is God, fucking cables cable. everywhere. It is an absolute mess. Cable not exactly nightmare. Ideal for de stressing or unwinding because whenever I stream, I have to set all of this up and remove all of it again before the morning, which would be fine and it wouldn't bother me. But if you've seen any stream of mine, then you would know that streams go wrong all the damn time for seemingly no reason. Which yeah, it's on extra a, every time things go wrong with no specific fix because of the half an hour it takes to get set up and check that everything is working to begin with. You guys wonder where I go for weeks on end? This is why. Because the shit doesn't work! It doesn't matter how good or powerful your equipment is, it will all break down eventually, most often when everything is already working perfectly, and then it all goes wrong the second you hit the big old go live button. And often you've got to sort it all out while broadcasting live, while concentrating on the game you're playing, while making sure to try engaging with the chat, while realising you're slowly becoming a sadomasochist without any of the fun bum stuff. This isn't- <laughs> Oh, what? Oh no, none I of the frozen. fun bum Why stuff. Why am I frozen on that face? Stream, what have you done? <laughs> what has happened to my stream? Why is it? Why is it it's the that? laughing in the background for wait, me. Wait, wait, 
What's happening? I can't fix it. They're all just laughing at him. <laughs> Deactivate. Activate. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. The whole thing has broken. <laughs> What's happened? Why? Why did that happen? You can never why have there, a stream go well from start to finish. It's like slightly nudged over to the right. I've got like a black border on the left. Oh my god. Right, uh, Logitech stream cam. Okay, I'm back, but it's completely... <laughs> Welcome to my high quality stream, everybody. <laughs> I'm a professional. What happens if I can zoom in? <laughs> I love how they can't stop laughing in the background. Oh Don't get me wrong, though. Even though the job can be They're like, this is the funniest hard, train wreck ever. And stressful, especially when YouTube is constantly fighting with you. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Being able to create my own stuff in my own time, in my own way, with no bosses to speak up to, no higher ups to report to, nothing being on the clock. I couldn't have ever imagined seeing anything better being in my life. Sorry, kids. Trust me, I am fully <laughs> aware that I am in an insanely lucky position. I, I know this, trust me. And whenever I complain about any of this stuff online or on Twitch or whatever, it's because, hey, it's still work. It's a lot of work. And work yeah, can be that, annoying sometimes, like especially that's, when you do a lot. That, <laughs> I don't mean it to pause it on his face like this all the time, but that's actually a legit thing, a legitimate thing, where... um. You're allowed to complain about your job, no matter how much uh, you love the job, no matter how much other people wish they had the same job, or um, they believe it, it's it's easier than their job, or whatever, whatever you want to say. It's a rite of passage. It's basically everyone's got to do, no matter what job you got. There's always going to be something to complain about. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Sort of work. <laughs> I also forgot to mention the um, final Christ. video exporting and rendering, uh, which can take multiple hours and sometimes things go wrong or the software crashes and I've got to try again. Or if I have a final video, I oh, have to I hate watch that. it all the way back. Especially whenever I've, I've had to, like, uh, it only happens on, like, bigger videos that are, like, hours long that I've uploaded before, where... Um, something will go wrong when I'm, uh, not importing, but ex exporting the video after I'm done editing and stuff. It's like, it'll be like on 99% done. And then as soon as it gets to a hundred, it's like, it'll make a fucking sound and it'll be like, yeah! <laughs> like everything you got to do it all over again. Because something went wrong on their end. It wasn't your fault. It was theirs. Oh, the frustration. And um, note any mistakes or any errors in the video or the render, which then means I have to go back to the edit and then re-render and re-export all over again. And there can sometimes be crashes and sometimes the final video comes out corrupted. Then you, know, you just got to keep trying until it works again. And then after you've got a final video, you've got to upload it to YouTube. And that has its own problems. Sometimes the uploading just gets stuck. Sometimes the processing never works and you don't get it in HD or 4K. Or sometimes yeah, we already know YouTube's got problems. Or we already know. <laughs> ID problems or copyright problems. And, and it's <laughs> but anyway this <laughs> family feud is officially done so all i've got to do now is scan it with my caddy wrist module and now we're ready <laughs> go family feud it's either a game show or dinner time at your house it's also known as family fortunes in the uk because when we stole the game show for uk audiences we thought that feud sounded too violent no, that isn't a joke. For years, we always Seriously? knew them as the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. What? Being British is a disease. Survey says. What? Mm. Why are you changing Dave, shit that don't Debbie, make sense though? Roll, Sean, and. Oh, and well done for telling everyone that single player is okay, because nobody is going to want to play this with you. Rest in peace, Louis Anderson. <laughs> I hope they paid you what you deserve to be printed onto a PS1 disc, looking like an inside-out snowman. Let's oh get my ready God. to stick the game in then. Oh. 
Now the survey says... Oh! <laughs> oh no, Louis. Oh god, Louis. Think about what you're doing. Stop. Please don't. No. No. no! Oh my Welcome god. To family Feud. You can go directly <laughs> backstage and prepare for the show, or you can go to our create your family selection. Hmm. Well, you know what? I've always wanted to create a family. Nobody wants to do that with me in real life. But sadly, I can't create one from scratch, so I'm just going to have to edit one like the Howler family. Hello there, Howlers. They are angry, they are ample, and they all live in a big hole. In this menu, you can edit each individual family member's appearances. So I've got oh to do them God. justice and make them all look like they really live inside the Grand Canyon. Perfect. Accurate. They have a little inbreeding problem. <laughs> she came out in her nice clothes. This is dribble. This is trout. No. This is boil. This is phlegm. No. And this is Louise. Yes, I'm happy no. with this. They all look no. suitably dirty and swampy. <laughs> Although, to be fair, dirty and swampy is the only things that I could think about because the sound effect that plays whenever you change one of their body parts is... Why? Well, would you look at that? I made an entire family in 16 minutes. I'm very fertile. But how do they look going backstage? <laughs> <laughs> Give them a hand. Oh, this sound effect. Time to start the game then. Let's play Family Feud. If you don't know how to play... Uh. All right, question one. Here they come. <laughs> Name something you wouldn't want your house to be close to. Um, my ex. No. What? Uh. Oh, McDonald. <laughs> All right, then. No need to shame me, family number two. What kind of great answer do you have? Train tracks. Do you want me to call the Samaritans? This is the family view PlayStation <laughs> 1 experience. See a question, type in a decent guess, get it wrong, and then sit there for over five minutes waiting for your next go. I'm not even exaggerating. It really takes this long to have another go at playing the game. The computer players always say good answers and hold the turn for each of their five individual family members until you want to rip your nuts off. And by the way, for that question of something you wouldn't want your house near, river is a damn good guess. Who wants to live by a river? What about the floodplains? And the fish! But no, apparently that's <laughs> way too out there. And now I run out of guesses and have to wait around for the next round while imagining what a loading family looks like. And then, and then, if you get the answer right, and it isn't the most popular answer on the board, the question moves on to the computer family automatically. And at that point, you're stuck waiting again until they screw up. Something that if you don't learn as a child, you'll never do it as an adult. Go to church. Do adults struggle to do this? Is this a skill you need to harness as a toddler? <laughs> <laughs> the real life invisible wall. By the way, if you don't learn to read as a kid, you'll never learn when you get older. But if you don't learn to write as a kid, nah, it's fine. Don't worry, you'll figure it out. Exercise. Exactly. Excellent. Expanding. You know, the more I look at my family, the more I have to question why the hell they look like this. I have used nothing but legitimate customization options from the game's menus without any stupid adjustments, mostly. But why do their <laughs> lips all have these disgusting rogue pixels? Why is this even happening? They all look like they have cake icing on their face. Are they all drooling? What are these crumbs of black sludge supposed to be? I didn't get yeah, what? There. Why does it look, <laughs> why does it look like that? that worse than it was 10 years so, ago. Well, that's someone obvious. literally Security. had to make it that it way. Show us! Leatherface family? <laughs> what? Well, that's blatantly not true. This game came out in the year 2000. A year later, 2001 happened, and then... You know, so security couldn't have been that good. I don't know, what do the computer players think? You never know what? what's gonna be up there. Survey says... <laughs> well by the way all of these uh, quick fades uh, to black and quick fades back out whenever the camera <laughs> angle changes makes me feel like i've got narcolepsy and whatever you do don't you dare hit pass when you have the chance to guess otherwise it means you're just waiting around doing nothing again for another five damn minutes i'm not even trying to come up with funny answers because it isn't worth it i just want to play more of the game and get one single point but i just can't on this question about what people put on top of their pianos i said photos and it didn't go through but then the computer Computer players said pictures and it counts. How am oh. I supposed to win this? Hope you had fun on oh. the field. See you soon. <laughs>
Be good to your family. Remember, you're stuck with them. Oh, great. I came here to play a game, not a reminder on why I moved out. <laughs> oh, damn. Seriously, man, how did we come out of this entire match with zero points? Zero points. This isn't right. We're the whore family. <laughs> do I need to go backstage and do some favors? It took me 50 whole minutes to get through one single match of Family Feud, and I think I only physically played the game for about three of them. But by all means, if you want to get yourself more of that, be sure to visit games.com. <laughs> I wonder what they have on that website. What's next? <laughs> if I want to see a picture of a man, do I go to men.com? Uh, uh, oh, oh. I mean, uh -oh. if anything, I do have to get some credit for sticking with a naming theme on the back of the font. Everybody's name here starts no with a No one's surprised. Day, no one's surprised. Debbie, uh, uh, dead. What? You thought I wasn't going to use the nail hammer that I invented? Oh, dear. Oh. Uh, Oh, oh, wait a sec. Yeah, it went through the hole. It went through the hole. <laughs> it's not in the table. It didn't go in the table. Now it's in the table. Shit. All <laughs> <laughs> you have to do is do all of that all over again another 20 times for each other game that you're going to be talking about and then stitch it together all in one big video. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear papa, baby. Oh. Eat your papa. Eat your papa. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a trip. Ugh, that's definitely one, uh, one how to, uh, make, uh, videos. It's definitely one way to, uh, so, how's Brexit going? <laughs> oh god. Oh. Uh, yeah, we got we, it was yeah, it was a good one. Like it was informative. Um crazy like only a caddy video can be. Um we got some neighbor lore. <laughs> apparently some of the neighbors don't have eyebrows anymore so that was interesting to learn <laughs> oh my god